this film, you will learn how to use your compass and map to safely navigate. Before heading out, it's important to always plan your route. Your navigational skills, physical condition and choice of terrain will all affect your plan. Make sure you create a plan that fits you. It's always better to play it safe than to take unnecessary risks. A map is a scaled-down model of reality, so it's important to understand how it represents distance. Using the map scale, you can measure distance with the compass base plate. If your compass lacks the corresponding scale, use a regular metric ruler. Drop the last three digits from the scale, and this is the number of meters on the ground represented by one millimeter on the map. So, on a 1 to 50,000 scale map, one millimeter represents 50 meters. Both when planning and traveling, use significant terrain objects to mark your route. Examples include rivers and lakes, hills, fields, paths, roads and power lines. By holding onto this visual handrail, you travel faster and more safely reducing the number of possible route-finding errors. Orientation of the map is the quickest and easiest way to use map and compass together and to avoid navigational mistakes. Simply turn the map so the map's meridians are aligned with the compass needle and that up on the map points north now every move you make will match the proper direction. Turning right on the map also means turning right in reality. By checking terrain objects, you can easily keep track of position and also be ready when it's time to change direction if you keep the map oriented north and your thumb on your current position. It will be easy and quick to find your last known position the next time you look at the map. When you reach a position after which you have no significant terrain objects to follow, you should use the Silver 123 system to travel a bearing from the map. Place the compass on the map with the edge along the desired line of travel. Make sure the direction of travel arrow points towards your destination. Rotate the bezel until N on the graduation ring points towards north on the map. Check that the north-south lines are parallel to the map meridians. Hold the compass horizontally in front of you. Turn yourself until the north end of the needle points towards N on the compass graduation ring. The direction of travel arrow now points precisely to your destination. Look up, select a landmark and walk to it. Repeat this procedure until you reach your destination. A mirror sighting compass is at its best in open terrain, where you must determine direction over long distances. When using a sighting compass with a mirror, hold the compass with the mirror tilted 45 degrees towards you. By looking in the mirror, you can now check that you hold the compass in the right direction and at the same time, find a new landmark to walk to. It's good to have an understanding of how far along your route you've traveled, especially when walking a bearing according to the Silver 123 system. This is normally done by checking objects that you pass. But in terrain where these don't exist, there are two other methods for judging distance. Time and steps. By using time, you use your approximate speed to calculate how much time it should take to travel your distance. For example, it takes you 30 minutes to travel 2 kilometers if your approximate speed is 4 kilometers per hour. By counting steps, you can calculate the distance by knowing your approximate stride length. Count each step with your right foot. If you know that your average stride is 0.8 meters, then it should take you 62 steps with your right foot 
to travel 100 meters or 620 steps per kilometer. Most important when navigating, be safe and make sure to inform someone where you travel and when you expect to return, in case of an accident or if you get lost. We at Silver wish you a pleasant journey.